Hi, um, I just want to talk about if you haven't watched my YouTube channel or seen things that I post on my stories, I have been talking about um, false prophet or um, posting other YouTube channels that have been talking about false prophet and what God or Jesus expect us to how to handle false prophet. The reason that it's upset me so much is because of a lot of things I've been through in life myself and it is hard to feel like you want to you want to trust people and like i said um before people you feel that you can trust are the people in leadership position who's in, who you feel should be in covenant with god because if they're saying they want to lead god people they want to be a shepherd to god's sheep to his flock then what Jesus said, a good shepherd would lay down his life for his flock. So these people are going into covenant with God saying, okay, this is what I want to do for the kingdom. This is how I want to serve you by serving your people. This is how I want to serve you by leading your people. In the Bible, it's not, you know, it's not about hate. It's, it's not about um, talking about people or putting people down or making people feel bad. It's really not. But even in your own household, if you have kids, you have rules and expectations of your kids. Every rule that you have, your kids are not going to like. Everything you say to your kids, some things you might say to them out of love, they may still get offended by it. And that's the same thing with God. His word is the Bible. So if you're a, a preacher or you put yourself in that position, the head of a church, and you're supposed to be educating God people on his rules and regulation, on his expectation, what he wants for us and where he wants us to ascend to. And if you're not teaching those words, well, if you're teaching those words the way they're supposed to be taught, somebody at some point in time will be offended. Somebody at some point in time will feel a certain type of way because throughout the Bible is given rules and regulations that somebody is not going to like. It's not just speaking about what God consider as a marriage between a man and a woman. It's not just about God talking about homosexuality. It's also talking about fornication. Fornication is having sex outside of, of marriage. Guess how many heterosexual people that go to church every day are, is having sex outside of the marriage. So if the, if, if the, the pre preacher or pastor or whoever is leading the church decide to have a sermon on that, Guess what? Somebody's going to get offended. Guess what? Somebody's going to get upset. But that's okay because this is what you're choosing. You're choosing to be in the covenant with God. These are his rules and regulations. At some point in time, you're going to get upset. If you fall in love with a person that is still married, they might be separated and have absolutely nothing to do with their husband or their wife because they're separated and you get in a relationship with that person, guess what? You're committing an adultery. Adultery isn't just you knowing this man and woman is married, knowing this man and woman live in the same household, and you're choosing to get involved with that person. You can get involved with a person that is separated, but guess what? They're still legally married. So guess what? That's, a, that's an adultery. You're committing an adultery because you can't get married to that person or you can't marry that person until you get a divorce first. So that means if you haven't gotten a divorce, you're still married. So if so, that's going to offend somebody. Somebody feeling is going to get hurt about that. In the Bible, talk about drunkenness. In the Bible, it's talking about gossiping. You know, it's a lot of things in the Bible that talks about as far as giving direction. But giving them direction from a loving place. So if you're saying, I don't want to upset people. I don't want people to make make. I don't want to make people mad. I don't want to offend anyone. People are getting beat up throughout their life. So I don't want to give them direction, give them things that's actually going to make them like their lives better. I'm just going to keep just feeding them fluff. Then what are you doing? Then you're not, you're not leading God's people. You're at that point when you make a decision that you're going to go against what the Bible says. And you're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about or you're going to put a spin on God word to make it more palatable you're out of alignment of what God wants so you're no longer serving the kingdom you're no longer working for God 
now you're working for self, which is selfish, which is nothing to do with God. Satan is selfish because that's why he wanted to take over heaven. Now you're doing a selfish act based on what you want and not what God wants. So now you're in a leadership position being selfish, but saying I'm leading God's people. And then once you take yourself out of alignment of what God wants, guess what else happened? You're taking con your congregation out of alignment as well because they're not getting the knowledge that they should be getting as far as what God wants for them, how God wants them to lead, lead, lead their lives. Think about um, God's people in um, with the, um, I'm sorry. Think about what God people with the Israelites when he got them out of slavery. The trip to get to the promised land was very short. But because a lot of them was out of alignment with what God want, they was lost in the desert for 40 years. When you do that to your congregation, now they're not in alignment with God. Now they're not doing things the way God want them to do things. They're doing things based on what you want them to do. So therefore, they could have, they might be going through some BS that if you pointed them in the right direction, if you showed them scriptures, if you helped them, if you said, well, this is what God wants for you. And then they can make decisions because at the end it's going to be their decision, but they can make biblical decision. They can make decision based off what God wants for them. And then they can live their life in a better way. And so they might get to the end of their troubles and their, their, their pain and suffering quicker but because you're putting them in a different direction because this is the direction you want them to go in now they're wandering around in the desert for 40 years a problem they could have been solved within a year and now it's taking 40 years to solve that's the thing I'm, I'm talking about that's the thing that hurts me it's not just about you're misleading them as far as as far as you know getting to heaven yes everyone who who truly love God everyone who truly chooses God they want their end place to be in heaven but what about on earth why have hell on earth when you don't have to a lot of people are experiencing hell on earth because they're giving wrong information and they're not like if you're not telling this person hey you're committing sin by being with this man that's married that's their choice if they want to stay with that person but they might you know they might sit there and think about yeah until he's ready to make a commitment um to me I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this or the same with the way with the man. A man might be involved with a woman who's currently married. And he might be like, well, you know, and there could be a woman that God wants him with that, that's everything he ever wanted out of a woman, but God's not gonna bring her into his life while he's dealing with this other woman. Because God don't create chaos. God don't create mess. God don't create issues. So this this woman could, have, could get the man that she wants that was that's perfect for her that God wants her to be with but because you're not telling her this is not a good situation because you don't want her to feel bad because you don't want him to feel bad or whoever is going through whatever you don't want them to feel bad so you choose not to tell them the truth sometimes the truth hurts sometimes the truth is very painful but it can cut out a lot of trials and tribulations it can make things much more easy for people. A lot of people are going through hell now because of preachers that refuse to do what God asked them to do. Because of preachers who refuse to stand on the word of God and choose to stand on themselves. Choose to do what they want to do. And all you're doing is bringing hurt to people. But your pockets are getting fat because you don't turn down that money, do you? You don't say, well, since I'm not speaking on behalf of God, I'm not going to take this money that I'm claiming is for God. You know, you the people love to say, oh, you when you don't tithe, you're stealing God's money. When God really don't need money. But y'all love to say that. But if you're not working on behalf of God, why are you trying to take his money from his people? Why don't you just say, you know what? I want to stay up here and just say what I want to say, but you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just going to let y'all know this is my opinion. This is not what God wants you to do because it, it's not in the Bible. Or well, I don't took God's word, you know, uh, Satan took God's word when he was talking to Eve in the, in the garden and he kind of twisted them around to make them sound, you know, different than what how God intended them to be. So he kind of manipulated them in a way. So, you know, y'all out there finessing God's word to God's people. 
because you don't want them to get the true understanding. You want them to stay subservient to you. You don't want them to be able to go out and, and, and you know, first they're, they're in a position where they're needing to be fed. But you don't want to put them in a position so now they can go out and feed other people. You want to be the main person so they can come to you. You want to be the one that say, hey, they need me. You don't want them to make them, because they can always need God. But you don't want them to, but you don't want to make them independent from you. Because if you do, guess what? Your 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 Sunday service offering might get short. So you want to make sure people keep coming back to you. So you you give them enough to get them excited, but then they gotta come back to get that feeling again. You don't want to give them the full the full force of if you align yourself with God, if you stay in alignment with God, you're always going to have that light shining on you. The beacon of light is Jesus, not you. You're just a rep representation. And if you're doing your job correctly, you're going to be able to sin just like Jesus did. Jesus sent out his disciples into the world. Jesus didn't keep them to himself. Jesus sent them out into the world to get other people. If you're not in that position to send people out in the world to get other people to bring them into the kingdom of God, then don't stand up there and, and act like you are. Because all you're doing is giving these people false hope. All you're doing is is um, you're you're delaying their 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 happiness. You're delaying what they could be getting from God. Because no um not no. Moses did not make it into the promised land because he didn't do what God asked him to do. You see what I'm saying? You got to think about if these people are not, if these people are saying I'm in covenant with God, then they're supposed to be in alignment with what God want them to do. Because even with Jesus, Jesus was praying because it was getting close to his death. And he's praying to his father to the point that, that he's sweating blood. And he's praying to his father it's like, you know, he wanted him to like take this cup away from him. And then he said, not my will, but yours. Jesus stayed in alignment with his father, even though he did not want to do it. He knew what his death was going to be like. He knew he was going to die. He did not. But he said, not my will, but yours. And he still had an opportunity to call down angels from heaven, but he still did not. Even though he want, wanted to walk away from what was going on. He still, he still chose not to. He still chose to do what God wanted him to do. When Abraham was asked to kill Isaac, that's his son. But he stayed in covenant with God. He stayed in alignment with God wanted him to do. And he was going to kill his son because of his love for God. But you're taking all these people out of alignment. They're not, if, they're, if they're listening to you and not understanding what you're really doing to them, and this goes to everybody who's misleading God's people. If you're in a position that you're supposed to be leading and you're misleading these people, you're taking them out of alignment. So what you think God's going to do? Give them what they're asking for? Give them what they expected? Give them all this because you're saying he's going to give it to them? No, if, he's out of, if they're out of alignment, that's not going to happen. What do you think would have happened if Jesus would have would have left, we wouldn't have salvation. If Jesus was like, no, I'm getting out of alignment. I don't want to die. We would not have salvation. God told Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of life, the knowledge of good and evil. Do not even touch the tree. They fell out of alignment with what God wanted. And what happened? They got kicked out of the garden. Eve got cursed. Adam got cursed. And we're descendants of that curse. It's a lot of things we go through because of that curse. As women, as men. Because that curse was generational. And so now you're taking these people. These people are going through hard times. These people are suffering. And you're taking them out of alignment with what God wants for them. You're not letting them make a decision for themselves. You're taking that away from them. Because you're not, if you're not teaching people the right way to go, how do they really know they're doing wrong? 
it's a lot of things recently in the Bible. I've, I've read the Bible one time all the way through. It was a hard read. I'm not going to lie because it was King James Bible. And that Bible was hard to read and it was hard to understand. Then I did a Bible where I listened to them read it to me. But you know, sometimes you're, you're, you're busy. You might not be fully focusing on there. You not, might not be catching everything. So there's recently, there's like things that came to my knowledge that I wasn't even knowledgeable before. I'm constantly searching for knowledge, but I wasn't even knowledgeable about that. And I do read my Bible. I get on, sometimes I Google stuff about the Bible because I, I'm constantly trying to learn. So just imagine a person who their only teacher is, the person who's standing in front of them on Sunday. That's the only representation of God that they have. And they're giving them wrong information. They're twisting God's words around. They're not talking about certain things because they don't want to offend people. They don't want to make people unhappy. They're giving them false expectation of who God is and what God expects of them. And, and it's just sad that these people do that, but they 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 want to be, like I said, it's the taxes. You get a tax break when you're a church. If they just say, I want to be a most motivational speaker and make people happy you don't get a tax break being a motivational speaker so they take their motivational speaker and turn it into I'm a church but you're hurting people in the process <laughs> that's all I wanted to say um, I hope everyone's doing great today peace